Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. I think today's video is just gonna be kind of a casual, like weekly reading vlog. Just gonna take you guys along with me this week as I make my way through my TBR. I do actually have some exciting plans this week, so I will talk about that in a second, but I have started a book that I'm very excited to talk about. So let's just get straight into that. You know her, you love her, Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. Everyone has been telling me like, I need to read this book, I need to pick it up. When I mentioned it in my TBR, I feel like that was the most most commented about book. People were like, oh, I'm really excited to see what you think about this book. And can I just say, I cannot believe it has taken me this long to pick this book up. I am about like 25% of the way done with this book, maybe a little bit less, but I am absolutely loving this. This is like exceeding so many of the expectations I had for it. It's one of those books that has a lot of hype. And so I was a little bit nervous because I was like, oh, I don't really know if this is going to be for me, but wow, this book is incredible so far. And I have heard people say that like after the 50% mark, it's like even better. And like the beginning is a little slow, but I've enjoyed the beginning so far. So I'm so, so excited to see where the story goes, but it's a really unique story. And I'm just like fully taken with it so far. I feel like a lot of people know what Ninth House is about. It's a hard book to describe. It's dark academia. It's a little bit paranormal and fantasy. Our main character's name is Alex Stern. She goes through something very, very traumatic. She ends up in the hospital and while there she gets approached by this like secret society at Yale and they want her to come to the school and be a part of the society because she has a special ability where she can see greys, which are ghosts, and the secret society at Yale. I'm still like a little bit confused on the full function of the secret society that she joins, but I feel like they investigate situations and monitor situations uh, by using these greys and the ability to see them, something like that. I feel like they kind of police paranormal activity, maybe? I could be wrong. That could be fully wrong. This book is like kind of hard to talk about, but we are sort of jumping between timelines and in the present day, a girl has been murdered, I believe on campus. And so Alex definitely is investigating that. And I imagine the greys are gonna come into play. We also follow the POV of another character named Darlington. I am obsessed with Darlington so far. He is so funny. He is so just like irritable and quick and witty and I'm just absolutely in love with him. And I'm really, really excited to see where both of their characters go. There are some mysterious circumstances surrounding Darlington in the present day at the moment. So I'm not really sure what that is all about. I really like Alex and Darlington so far. There is wit and humor in this book. There is a very interesting, as I said, like kind of above my head magic system, so to speak happening right now. And hopefully as I get further into the book, I'll understand it a little bit better, but I'm really liking it so far. Like I'm grasping the general plot, I'm excited, and I just want to get further into this book. So I'm hoping to finish Ninth House probably tomorrow because on Wednesday, today is Monday by the way, on Wednesday I am going to Sin City, Las Vegas. I'm very excited. I have never been to Vegas before. One of my family members is actually getting married and so we are going there for the wedding and I'm just so so excited. I think it's gonna be so much fun and I will definitely be bringing you all along. I don't think I'm gonna do like a travel vlog. Like I'm not gonna include a ton of footage there with my family or anything like that, but I'm sure I will include some B-roll and I do want to read obviously on the plane. So I'm hoping I'll do a reading check-in or two while I'm there, but I just think it'll be fun to kind of include shots of that. And that's what I'm doing this week. And this is a weekly reading vlog. As far as my plans for after I finish Ninth House, I am contemplating picking up Warbreaker. I have been thinking about that book lately. It's been on my mind. So that has potential for my next read, but don't hold me to that. It is on my January TBR, but TBRs are kind of just like general guidelines for me. They're not like super strict because I am such a mood reader, but I just want to start this video, say hello. It's going to be a very, very fun week. And I have very good, just like, I feel good about this book. I'm really excited. I'm really, really loving the writing. Leigh Bardugo. I just love her so much. Shadow and Bone trilogy. It's like fine. It's like a three-star trilogy. Six of Crows is gorgeous. A work of art. Kaz and Inej. Thank you. I love every single character in that book. And obviously the writing is very, very different in this book from Six of Crows or the Shadow and Bone trilogy, but I just really like Leigh Bardugo's voice and writing style. It's just one that I really connect to. So this is gorgeous and I'm very excited to get further into it. I am going to go read a bit more. I think I'm going to read tonight, go to the gym, probably watch some booktube and kind of get ready for my trip. I will check in with you all either later tonight or tomorrow when I'm a little bit farther into Ninth House with my thoughts. Hey guys, so it's the next day. Today is Tuesday. I'm so excited. The sun is out. I am done with work. I am now off for the next week and I'm going on vacation tomorrow. So it's a good day. And I have very exciting bookish unboxings that I want to do. So I've had both of these packages for a while and I've just been waiting for like the proper vlog to put them in, but it's finally time to unbox them 
so I'm very excited. Quick reading update on Ninth House. I read quite a bit last night. I forget what page I'm on, but still really, really loving it. Darlington absolutely like game over with him. I love him so much. I'm really gonna try to finish the book tonight. The flight's tomorrow. I wanna start a new book tomorrow and I would like to just like finish Ninth House before I go on my trip. We shall see. I'm gonna listen to the audiobook while I pack tonight. That is it for reading updates. Now let's open some bookish mail. I'm very, very excited about this. Okay, so the first thing I have came in this little envelope. It is from the shop Sonnet and Fable and they're actually based in Ireland. Shout out to the motherland. So these are really cute. So it's a bunch of bookmarks. They are themed bookmarks. Can you take a guess what the theme of these bookmarks is? Oh my God. So they are Prithian themed bookmarks. So each bookmark represents a different one of the courts in the Accord of Thorns and Roses series. Let's find the Knight Court here. Oh my God, so, ooh, so stunning. So we have the Knight Court bookmark. These are really beautiful. They're like very realistic, real looking. They're just really, really stunning. So they make the courts in Prithian look like real places, which I absolutely love. So these are really stunning. I can always use more bookmarks. Okay, and then we have this big beast. I ordered these like three months ago, maybe in October, I want to say. I got a little bit delayed coming. I knew they were going to take a while to ship anyway, but they got a little bit delayed even further, but I think it'll be worth the wait. So I have this big bubble wrap surprise. I'm so excited. Okay, you guys. So these are the Lit Joy Crate editions of the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black. Okay, so it says, oh, oh my God. Wait, so much is happening. All right. Congratulations, you are the owner of the Lit Joy Special Edition, the Folk of the Air by Holly Black. So there's that. Didn't even see that. So there's an art print of Jude and Cardin, my parents. And then another one, Knife to the Throat. They invented Knife to the Throat as far as I'm concerned. Oh, Oh, and here's another print. I didn't know that these prints were coming with it. Oh my God. You guys, look at this. So we have the Cruel Prince, the Wicked King, the Queen of Nothing, and then How the King of Elfame Learned to Hate Stories, which is a short story collection. First up, we have the Cruel Prince, super beautiful. And then look at those gold sprayed edges. What's extra? Oh my God. I can't even speak. These are the most beautiful things I own, pretty sure. What's extra special about this book, sign two, is this collection has Holly Black's annotations. Oh my God, okay. I don't even really wanna look at her annotations. Then we have my favorite, which is The Wicked King. So this is a little bit more blue. Are you joking? Like, are we joking with this, with these end pages? I didn't even look at the end page for The Cruel Prince. Oh my God. I'm gonna die, okay. Wow, then we have The Queen of Nothing, which is a little bit more gray. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my gosh, okay, so there's that. Oh wow, this is beautiful. Jude and Cardin. And then we have How the King of Elfame Learned to Hate Stories, which is kind of this reddish brown edition and no special end pages, but that's still very pretty. This is absolutely stunning. So as far as my like prized possessions go, number one, Hannah's special edition of A Court of Silver Flames. Number two, this set. Number three, my A Touch of Magic Designs Akatar Dust Jackets. That's, that's it. Those are my three most prized bookish possessions. Now I really want to reread the Folk of the Air series. I was going to do that before I read The Stolen Air, but these got a little bit delayed and I really wanted to reread these editions specifically because like I paid for them and I was really excited about them. But because they were delayed, I just decided to read The Stolen Air before I did a reread of this series. If you saw my rating, for the stolen air on Goodreads. Let's not talk about it, but I love Holly Black and I love this series. So I, I think I'm going to reread this series this year. I definitely think a reread is in my future. Okay, so that is my little unboxing for my bookmarks and then my Lit Joy Crate Folk of the Air editions. I am going to go pack, do laundry, get my life together, finish the Ninth House audiobook, hopefully, fingers crossed, and get ready for my trip. So I'll either talk to you tonight or I will see you guys in Vegas.
friends. So first things first, obviously I am not in Vegas right now. I am back home. So I do think that I'm going to include some like Vegas B-roll. So you've probably already seen that. But essentially what happened is we got to Vegas. We were there for a wedding. It was really, really busy. And I just did not have the time to sit down and talk to you all, unfortunately. But I did get some good reading done on my trip. So I apologize for no Vegas check-in, but we are home. I'm so happy to be back. Had a really, really great time. The wedding was beautiful and it was really fun to go to Vegas for the first time. So now we are continuing the vlog and I have very, very exciting reading updates. Number one, I did finish Ninth House. I finished that on the plane ride there and it was really, really great. I think I am going to give Ninth House four stars. In the beginning, I was like super, super obsessed, really, really taken in by the story and the characters. The only reason that this book did not get a five-star rating from me was I feel like around the 50 to 75% mark of this book, within that portion of the book, it did like drag a little bit for me. I was a little bit less interested. I was kind of like, okay, where are we going? And my interest was just not as strong during those parts. But I still really, really liked the characters. I really liked the world that Lee Bardugo has created. I like the secret societies. I like the grays. I like the magic system. And it was really good. Very, very solid dark academia, paranormal book. I just did not feel super like consistently enthralled throughout the entire book. So I gave it four stars, but not a bad rating at all. And can I say the ending of Ninth House has me so, so excited to read Hellbent. I really want to fit that in in January, but I'm so excited. I feel like we have so much potential for a really crazy story to happen in Hellbent, and I'm just so, so excited to see where that goes. So Ninth House, very, very great. Really glad that I read that. I cannot believe that I've put it off for so many years. A really, really solid book, and I'm really glad that I read that this month. But now, now I'm on another planet, and that is the planet of Brandon Sanderson. I started Warbreaker. I started Warbreaker on the way back from Vegas to Seattle on that flight, and... I, I can't even speak. I'm so excited. I'm so, so happy about this book. It has brought me so much joy thus far. And I know I'm like getting ahead of myself, but I just want to like talk about this for a second, okay? I've read like eight or nine books this month and this year, right? Because we are in January. And while I've read some solid books, I haven't felt that excitement that you feel when you read a book that you just know is going to be amazing and like mean a lot to you and just you're going to get so wrapped up in. But Warbreaker is giving me that. I I am utterly obsessed with this book thus far. I'm on page 160. So really I'm still in the beginning. So I am into it, but I still have so much to discover. But oh my God, you guys, I am in love. I'm obsessed and I'm in love and I'm so, I don't want to say I'm surprised because this book has a lot of hype. Brandon Sanderson as an author has a lot of hype. I hear him talked about quite a bit on booktube. So like I should have known that I was going to love it, but I, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. I truly didn't think that I was going to connect as quickly and as hard as I did right in the beginning. So I'm going to briefly talk about the plot of this book. I will say there's a lot going on. I'm not going to get super deep into like the magic system and the world building and all of that because it's just, it's, there's a lot happening. But this novel, we follow four POVs, which is really, really fun. The first POV is a character named Vasher, and we meet him in the prologue. He is actually imprisoned. We also follow a character named Siri, and Siri is a part of this exiled royal family. They have sort of been exiled by this group of gods. There's kind of always been a tension between this royal family and the gods, but they struck up a treaty many years ago for the king, I guess, to send his eldest daughter to go and bear an heir for the god king. And the time has come. There have been some rumblings and some news and some rumors of more tension building and they really want to avoid war. And then the fourth and my favorite POV that we follow is Light Song. And he is actually a god. He lives where the god king lives and he's so like uh, he's like pessimistic and he, I even think he says something along the lines of like I don't even believe in the religion that makes me a god and he's so funny and he likes to mess with there's all these kind of monks that follow him around write down his dreams and sort of tend to him and do whatever he needs and he like messes with them and like gives them nicknames he's this very like cynical pessimistic god doesn't really know his place in the world doesn't really know if he like agrees with what his place in the world should be and we follow his storyline as well so all of that might be a little bit <laughs> kind of Using, but basically these four storylines I assume are going to converge. I think that I am at the spot that I'm at. I'm seeing the beginnings of the potential converging of those storylines. We have royal princesses, we have a god, and then we have Vasher. And I'm not quite sure what his role is, if he's like a mercenary or what his deal is, but I'm excited to see more of his presence within the book. But first of all, can I just say the writing style is so, so palatable. I, I truly thought that this was going to be heavy and dense and hard to get into. And I don't know if maybe the Stormlight archives are like that, or maybe the Mistborn 
Orange trilogy is like that, but I will just say I was into this immediately. Like in the prologue, I was like, yep, I'm really, really liking this. There is so much wit and humor written into this book, which is really, really nice. And it's just, I've, I've laughed out loud while reading this, which I always love. And I've just found the plot lines to be interesting and quick moving. I haven't felt kind of that slow feeling at all. I haven't felt any pacing issues. And I'm just really, really intrigued by all four of our characters here. This does feel like a character driven story, but also like the plot is interesting. I don't know. It's, it's a good marriage of the two, but the characters are really, really just making me love this book so, so much. I'm in love with Light Song. I'm really, really taken by Siri and Vivenna's personality, how different they are. And that's another thing too. We have four POVs. All of them feel very different. Their voices feel very different. Their personalities I can clearly define and I can envision them very well in my head. So I'm obsessed. I'm in love, you guys. Like I, if this doesn't end up being a five star, I'll be so sad because right now I'm just like, yes, this is a five star. This is such a solid book. I am so, so excited to read more of Brandon Sanderson now. I was just worried. I don't know. I was just kind of worried like, oh, am I not going to like it as much as everyone else does? I really, really want to, but who knows? And I, I can attest the hype is real and I am absolutely in love with this world. I am so intrigued and I'm really, really excited to see where the story goes. So I'll definitely keep vlogging this. I'll probably check in when I'm at like the 50% mark or something like that. But this is just going beautifully thus far. And because it is going so beautifully, I uh, bought something and I was not looking for this. This kind of just came across my Amazon homepage. And I was like, you know what? That's that's pretty cute. That's pretty cool. I kind of want to buy that. As you guys saw, I have the mass market paperback of Warbreaker. There is a hardcover edition, but it's that same cover. And I'm not like obsessed with the cover, even though I do prefer to have fantasies in hardcover. I was like, eh, I don't really need like the hardcover edition of this book. I'm not crazy about the cover, whatever. But then I saw this edition and I was like, you have piqued my interest there, Jeff Bezos. So I went ahead and ordered another edition of Warbreaker. Ooh, oh my God. It's so stunning. Okay. So I actually ended up getting the UK edition of Warbreaker. It's this really pretty white cover. It reminds me kind of of the Throne of Glass UK editions, those all white covers. And I just think it's really, really beautiful. Oh my God. And it's just like, it's a more traditionally sized paperback. So as you can see, like quite a difference. And I just think that this is really stunning. So I hate to do it, but you guys know me. I have multiple copies of books that I love and Warbreaker is no exception. So I'm just so, so excited. I'm going to switch to this edition now and read this, but oh my God, I can't wait. So I put my book mark in and now I will be reading this edition. But yeah, so that is the update. Obsessed with Warbreaker. So, so excited to see what happens. And if this goes well, I definitely think I'm going to start the Mistborn trilogy like very, very soon. I might add it to my February TBR. Not the whole trilogy, but the first book, I think. But anyway, super, super excited about this. I'm just, oh my God, I'm so obsessed. It just feels really, really good to like be very excited about a book. That's not to say that I have not enjoyed the books that I've read thus far this year, but like none of them have just given me this feeling, this like very excited. I just think about this book when I'm not reading it. I'm listening to the audiobook as much as I can while I'm cleaning the house. Like I just, I can't get enough of this story and these characters thus far. So that is very good. So I am actually going to switch gears here. I'm actually about to start a fantasy romance reading vlog. So I'm going to film the intro for that and then get on some sprints with some friends to read Rhapsodic. So you will see that fantasy romance vlog TBD sometime after this vlog comes out, but I will talk to you guys in a little bit when I have more to say about Warbreaker. Hello guys. Happy Monday. It is the start of a new week and we are still working on this weekly reading vlog. So I have a very quick update for you because I am planning to finish this book today, but I wanted to check in before I did so. And that is Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I am officially at the 50% mark of this book and it just keeps getting better and better. I am so amazed by how everything is coming together, how these characters are being developed alongside the plot, how there is like a lot of political intrigue in this book, but I think that it's done so well alongside making our characters interesting and likable. And I'm just so curious about them. I'm usually not someone who like is obsessed with a very political forward book, but I just think that there's a really nice balance here. Everything is working for me. The plot, the world, the magic system, the politics and the characters and their interpersonal relationships. This book has me by the throat essentially is what I'm trying to say. So I'm very, very excited to continue reading this. I absolutely love the audiobook, by the way, definitely recommend. I really like the narrator and um, she definitely gives kind of a distinct voice to all the characters and it's just a really fun listening experience. We are kind of slowly starting to see the pieces of each character's POV come together and kind of intertwine and it's really interesting. I still don't entirely know like what's going on, what nefarious activities are afoot, but I'm getting a lot of little hints here and there. The priests in this book, by the way, I did say they were monks earlier. There are monks talked about in this book, but the priests are the one who spend a lot of times around the gods, obviously. 
obviously, and like pay attention to what they do, advise them, all of that. Their role in this world is very, very interesting. And I'm really, really intrigued by them, their motives and their actions and kind of just like how they operate in this world is really, really fascinating. And also, can I just say, shout out to Blush Weaver. I don't know if she's like super, super significant in the plot of this book. She's kind of a side character right now, but I am in love with her. And like, I want a whole book about her. I'm so, so fascinated by her. She's like kind of manipulative, which sounds bad, but I think she's a really, really interesting character. And like, I don't know if her motivations are her own, if they are for the greater good, but I'm really, really enjoying her addition to Light Song's kind of storyline. And I'm so curious to see what her role in this entire book will be. And I just love her. And she kind of seems like a hottie. So I'm just like obsessed with her right now. I am just falling more and more in love with this book as I go. It is a stunning, stunning read thus far. Really, really happy that I picked this up. This is such a good book to read in January. It's just making me so excited to continue on with Brandon Sanderson's work and fantasy in general. Okay, the lighting has changed now because the sun is coming out. By the way, I did get a new camera uh, for Christmas and I'm still kind of figuring out like settings and aperture and ISO and like all that fun stuff. So I apologize if the lighting is a little bit all over the place. I'm still working it out. So bear with me on that. But basically I just wanted to say hello, let you guys know that I'm 50% of the way done with this book. Absolutely loving it. Really, really intrigued by the plot. Very excited to see how it ends. I am going to finish this book today, hopefully. But tonight I think I am going to go to an indie bookstore kind of near me. I actually don't have any indie bookstores in my like immediate area, but we are going to go to this bookstore that Sean heard about and he was like, oh, we should go there. So I will go there tonight, hopefully pick up a book or two and I'll have like a little mini book haul later for you guys, either tonight or tomorrow. But I will talk to you guys later after the bookstore and after I have finished this masterpiece. Hi guys. Okay, I have a lot of updates. As you saw, I went to the bookstore. I got three books. I will show you those in a second, but I just finished Warbreaker. <laughs> oh my God, I literally finished it like five minutes ago. So I'm kind of like on a high right now, but holy, this was literally like genuinely one of the best books that I have ever read. I'm gonna start off with that. This was beautiful. This is why I love the fantasy genre. This book just like perfectly encapsulates everything I love about fantasy. Oh my god. The plot, the characters, the twists, the freaking betrayals that we went through in this book. Blush Weaver and Light Song. All of the character arcs that happened, like I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with every single character. There was not a moment while I was reading this book that I was like, oh, it's slow or, oh, I'm kind of bored with this POV or, oh, I don't really care about this character. I care about them all equally. Like I love them all. Every plot point was interesting to me. Like everything was done so well and so well crafted from the beginning. I, while I was finishing this book, I was like tearing up at a lot of different things. And I just feel so emotional right now. This was amazing. I know that like, I'm not really forming super coherent thoughts right now, but my mind is blown. And I'm so, so happy that I read this. Oh my God, I'm going to reread this book like for the rest of my life. This is just such a perfect book to me. Oh my God. I know that this is a standalone, but I think I have heard rumors that there's potentially going to be a sequel and I need it yesterday, to be totally honest with you. So obviously I gave this five stars, but this is like more than five stars. This is like a nine star book, honestly. Like this is just a work of art. And what's really exciting is this is my first, okay, so I did technically, I have already given two books five stars this year, but it was Heartstopper volume three and four. And those are valid five stars. Those are wonderful, wonderful graphic novels, but I haven't given like a proper, just like novel, a five star rating yet this year. And this is the first one. And what a way to start out the year. My first official five star of just a traditional novel. This is everything. I am so excited to continue on 
with my Brandon Sanderson journey. If you have any, uh, obviously I haven't read the Mistborn trilogy. I haven't read the Stormlight Archives. I've heard that the Stormlight Archives is like his magnum opus. So like, I'm sure that's going to be even better, but I will just say as someone with very limited knowledge, this is a great way to start out with Brandon Sanderson because I am hooked now. This was absolutely incredible and it's a standalone and God, it was so easy to get into. It was so much fun. It was character driven, but also the plot was really well done. Like everything was so, so good in this book. Oh my God, I just love this so much. But anyway, I'm so excited to continue reading Brandon Sanderson books for the rest of the year. So here's what I think I'm gonna do. Here are my plans. Here are my Bran San plans. I've read Warbreaker and I have already decided I'm going to put the first Mistborn book on my February TBR. Start with that. My goal for this year, as far as like all of his works that I wanna get to, I'm gonna try to read the first three books in the Mistborn series. I think that like there's the Mistborn trilogy, which is the first three books. And then I have heard that there's like a second part to the Mistborn series. I feel like it's called like the waxing and waning series, but it's like Mistborn. I don't really know, but I know that the first three books are the Mistborn trilogy. And then like the ones that continue on take place like 300 years later. So my plan is to read the first three Mistborn books this year, and then to start the Stormlight Archives. There is no way I'm going to be able to get caught up with the Stormlight Archives in its entirety by the end of the year, because those books Books are like a thousand pages, but if I can read Mistborn one through three and then The Way of Kings this year, I feel like that'll be a really, really good, I'll make progress, I'll make good progress within his work, but oh my God, I'm so happy. Like I'm literally just so, so happy right now that I read this and that I loved it and I loved every single second of it. Like even books that I absolutely love, sometimes we'll have parts or moments that I'm like, eh, this is a little slow or I don't really care for the storyline or this character or whatever, no. She is perfect, she is beauty, she is grace. I'm so, so happy that I read this and I don't really have anything else to say. Obviously, this is amazing. This book kicked my ass and it was a pleasure. That is the second book for this reading vlog. Before I talk about the last book that I will be reading in this reading vlog, let me talk about the books that I got from the little indie bookstore that I went to yesterday. It was really cute. I had never been there before. They had a cafe and everything as well. And I picked up three books that have been on my mind lately that I wanted to get and they were at this store. So perfect opportunity. Opportunity. So the first one is Chloe Lee's Two Wrongs Make a Right. This is a contemporary adult romance and I believe it is fake dating. I think our story is our two main characters have friends who have been like trying to set them up and are constantly playing matchmaker for them. So they decide to fake date to get everyone off their back, but then they're like, let's have a really epic breakup so that they never try to like matchmake us again because we don't like it, but obviously they're gonna fall in love. So this sounds really cute. I've read one book by Chloe Lee's and that was The Mistletoe Motive and one of the best romances I've ever read. Um, amazing. So I want to read like her entire backlist. So really excited to read this. And then I got Disorientation by Elaine C.A. Chow. I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I apologize. But this book, I've seen so many places. I've seen it a lot on Bookstagram. The cover is one of my favorite covers I have ever seen in my life. I think it's so beautiful. I love the art style. And this is supposed to be like a satire, which I did read my year of rest and relaxation, which is also a satire. I read that last year. It was like pretty good. I don't know. I know it's like not everyone's cup of tea, but like I found it to be entertaining and I want to read this book. It does have definitely better reviews than my year of rest of relaxation does. I don't think that they're comparable at all other than the fact that they're both satires, but I am really curious about this book. This cover is just really, really everything to me. So the just little blurb inside says a Taiwanese American woman's coming of consciousness ignites eye-opening revelations and chaos on a college campus in this outrageously hilarious and startlingly tender debut novel. I don't know. I think this sounds really cool. I, I like a college campus story. I like a satire. So I'm curious about it. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I picked this one up as well. And then I picked up, this is a book that like I should have bought a long time ago and it had always kind of been in the back of my mind, but my mother-in-law read this recently and she loved it and she told me I need to read it. So I picked up Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. And I am so, so excited to read this. I did see somebody compare it to the social network a little bit, like that story. And I know I think it's about like video game creation or something like that. But I've just heard obviously really amazing things. This book is everywhere. So I really want to prioritize this and get to this book soon. So as far as plans for the rest of the vlog, I'm just gonna make this a full fantasy vlog. We read Ninth House, which is dark academia, paranormal fantasy kind of. We read Warbreaker, which is like, 
the queen, the one of the best fantasies I've ever read ever. And next, I think I'm going to read, I don't have it with me, it's on my bookshelf, but I'm gonna pick up Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, I believe is her name. So that is a book that I put on, I think my November TBR, but I did not get to it. And the reason why I didn't pick it up is because I had other books that I was prioritizing for other vlogs and I wasn't gonna have enough time to read Sorcery of Thorns. And it is a book that is a five-star prediction. I hear amazing things about, and I just really think I'm going to like it. So I didn't read it because I was like, I don't wanna rush this. It's the end of the year. It's just kind of crazy. So I think now is the time. I have the audiobook from Scribd. I have the physical book that I'm gonna read along with, and I am just really, really excited to pick it up. So this is a YA fantasy, and I think that it has to do with like a library, like a magical library. I believe it's a standalone, but I do think that a prequel novella came out recently. So if I like this, I will definitely go pick that up. But it's a book that I've been curious about for a really, really long time. And I just see a lot of amazing things. So I want to pick that up and read that today and then maybe finish that tomorrow. And then we'll close this vlog out. So that is it for this update. Sorry, I'm so long winded and kind of all over the place. You know, when you finish a great book and you're just like on a high and you like can't speak, I'm going to go start Sorcery of Thorns and I will talk to you guys when I am a little bit into it and let you know my first impressions. <laughs> So just wanted to do another quick check-in. I think that you guys are like even and balanced. You are currently on like four or five copies of A Court of Silver Flames right now. So I hope that it's even, but if not, I'll just make this very, very quick. But I wanted to check in regarding Sorcery of Thorns. As you can see, I have not moved at all. I've been on my couch pretty much all day because like right after I started Warbreaker, I picked up Sorcery of Thorns. I am really, really liking this so far. This has such like, okay, first of all, very amazing aesthetic and vibes coming from this book. Very magical, very whimsical, very mysterious. I'm really liking it, kind of dark. Not dark like dark romance or something like that but just kind of like this dark library magic you guys get what i mean i don't know it just kind of is giving off that vibe and i really really like it our main character's name is elizabeth she's an apprentice in this magical library where there's like grimoires and she studies under this director who kind of teaches her about like handling all of these magical books and something happens and elizabeth gets framed for it she's accused of treason and she has to team up with her sworn enemy and his name is nathaniel thorne he is a sorcerer and she really doesn't like him and kind of assumes all these really bad things about him i think he's going to maybe help her like like clear her name or kind of figure out the mysterious circumstances surrounding that thing that happened at the beginning of the book. And I'm excited for it. I think we are gonna get a little bit of an enemies to lovers, YA enemies to lovers, but enemies to lovers nonetheless. And I really like their dynamic. Nathaniel is very sarcastic and very funny and charming. And I just really, really like him so far. And Elizabeth is a fun main character thus far as well. So this is going really good. I am, I'm only on page 100. So I'm like a fifth of the way through the book, but I think I'm gonna get through this pretty quickly. I really like the audiobook. I'm very curious to see where the story is going to go and I'm into it thus far. So that is kind of just the quick first impressions update for Sorcery of Thorns. I think the rest of the day, I would like to hopefully get to like the 50% mark. That is my goal. And then hopefully finish this vlog and post it on Thursday, fingers crossed. That's the plan. But I do also want to go to the gym. I have been just like laying around reading for the past several days, which like we love. That is like my preferred method of existing. But my back is like starting to hurt because... I just like curl up like a, I don't even know, like a seashell. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I curl up and I read and my back is really killing me. So I need to like go outside, go to the gym, be a person for a little bit and move my body. So I need to go to the gym tonight to make myself feel a little bit better. And then I will probably take a bubble bath because of course it is me. I'm going to take a bubble bath and then I'm going to read some more. So I think that that sounds like a really good evening. So this fantasy vlog is going very well thus far. I don't want to speak too soon. This book could break my heart, but I don't feel like it's going to. I definitely feel like I'm going to love this book because I'm just liking the writing and where things are going and I like our characters. So what more can you ask for? But that is it. I am going to keep reading tonight, as I said, and I will talk to you guys probably tomorrow with an update when I'm at around the 50% mark with more of my thoughts.
Happy Thursday. I am here for my final check-in for this vlog. I ended up finishing Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I did have every intention to check in with you guys before I finished it, but that was before I kind of got deeper into the story. And I have to say, I am a little bit disappointed by this book and I didn't check in because I just didn't really have a lot of things to say. This book is not bad by any means, but I did find the middle of this book, the meat of this book to be very slow and boring. And I just, I stopped caring while I was reading this, which really, really sucks. I had very, very high hopes, like five star hopes for this book. But unfortunately, I just, I just didn't get there with this book. I don't know, I don't know what it is. The writing is really great. The vibes are, as I said, 10 out of 10, and they continued on throughout the book. Like, it's a really, really interesting and kind of whimsical writing style and atmosphere that's created with this book. But I don't know. I just, I do have to wonder if reading this right after reading Warbreaker and Ninth House, which are two like adult fantasies, if maybe that affected my opinion of this book. But I will say, like, I enjoy YA fantasies. Even if, like, I can't totally relate to the characters, I think that they're really fun stories. And I thought that this would be just like a very easy four or five star book for me but I think I'm gonna give this book a 3.5 star, which is not a bad rating. It's just not kind of what I had hoped for this book. I will also say that our main character, Elizabeth, there was nothing wrong with her. She wasn't like annoying or anything, but she was pretty flat. And I feel like Nathaniel, who is kind of our other main character and the love interest, he was a lot more interesting and a lot more fleshed out and just kind of had more of a personality. He jumped off the page a lot more than Elizabeth. And I feel like that kind of affected my enjoyment of this book as well. I just overall feel like this is a very fine book not gonna be a fave but like it was it was good i can see why someone would like this book and give it like four or five stars it just didn't work for me so this is a 3.5 so that is it for this fantasy weekly reading vlog i hope you guys enjoyed i'm hopefully gonna be uploading this actually today so if you are seeing this on thursday hello happy thursday i think next i'm going to have a fantasy romance vlog coming up and then my birthday is in like a week and a half and i'm planning to do like a birthday book shopping vlog and I'm also going to do like a birthday week vlog and of course my TBRs wrap ups, all that good stuff. So many exciting things coming on this channel, but I just really appreciate you all being here and I'm just very, very excited for more vlogs to come. So if you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave just any and all of the purple emojis. I'm just, I'm in a purpley mood today. So leave any purple emoji or leave all of them. Do, do whatever you'd like down in the comment section. As always, my Instagram and my Goodreads are linked down below. You are welcome to follow me on there at any time. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I love you guys so much and I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will catch you guys in the next one.